Welcome to the eighth video in the 10 Reasons You Need Fusion series. We've already looked at Fusion's superb 3D environment in the last video, and here I just want to build on that a little and show you a few more aspects of 3D workflow, including stereo. Fusion has some amazing capability in these areas and is constantly being developed to make it even more powerful. Things like volume masking and volume fog enable you to do things that previously would have taken you massive amounts of time. Plus, with the current demand for working stereo in both movies and TV, you need a compositor that can deal with this environment quickly and efficiently. So, let's push on and take a closer look. I'm going to start by showing you the Volume Mask tool, which is one of the trio of position tools inside Fusion. I've got a shot here that's been rendered out of a 3D application and traditionally maybe what I would want to do here is color correct it through a mask. So in order to do that, first I would have had to set up the color correction and then adjust the gain or whatever. Then I'd have to create a mask, in this case an ellipse, and then effectively apply a tracker to that and then connect the mask to it. The track, of course, would only have been done on a 2D basis, and as you can see from the result that I'm getting, I'd have to do lots of adjustments to the ellipse in terms of size and position, etc. I've also got the problem of dealing with this roof line in the foreground, so a second mask would be needed. Consequently, lots of time-consuming manual adjustments to make this shot work. The great thing about the volume mask, though, is that it makes the whole process so much easier. So if we go back to my original shot, I can use a volume mask and use it in conjunction with the world position pass generated from my 3D application. The world position pass looks like this, where the XYZ data has been generated and represented here by RGB values. This is then connected to the volume mask via a channel boolean tool, giving you the ability to effectively choose a position for your mask in true 3D space. If I use the Pick Translation tool and move around the shot, it defines a totally real-world mask using the World Position Pass. Going to the Color Correction tool now and looking at the output of that, I can still make the volume mask active and pick from there, so I get a more realistic sense of what's happening to the position of my mask. I can still go in at any point and adjust the soft edge and the size, so I can create a really nice pool of light with this associated soft edge. Now when I go back to the beginning of the shot, you can only just about see the pool of light. If I increase the size a little, you get a better idea of where it is. But the important thing is that it's being masked by the roof line in the foreground automatically, because as I said earlier, it uses the XYZ data from the world position pass. Taking that principle a stage further, the Volume Fog tool can be used to create sophisticated volume fog on images containing X, Y and Z position data, again derived from a world position pass. It works on 2D images and delivers much faster results and interactive feedback when setting up the fog. Let me show you how this works. In this example, we'll take the 3D Beauty Pass render that we've already been using, together with the accompanying world position pass render generated from a 3D application. Again, these can be connected via a channel booleans tool. With further connection to a volume fog tool and based on the default setting, you can already see the beginnings of your volume fog effect. The eyedropper translation pick tool can again be dragged around your beauty pass render to choose the fog position and depth. Your volume fog would then be exposed, which includes the ability to take advantage of occlusions in 3D space. Once more in this example, the foreground building, an incredibly powerful feature. In the Volume Fog tool itself, you can control the shape and the geometric translations of the fog, rectangle or sphere. You'll also find the Transforms and Translation sliders to move, rotate and scale your fog in true 3D space. Apart from being able to put Volume Fog in a 3D landscape as you've just seen, it can also be used for various other effects, in this case, motion graphics. So once again in this example we've used a fast noise tool, but this time combined it with some text that simply says Fusion. I've added a camera to that and merged it into a 3D environment along with a spotlight, moving from right to left. 
This is then combined with the volume fog tool in just the same way as before. The result we get this time is the light shining through the lettering. The same effect you might get on a live stage using lights and a smoke machine. If we look at the final render, you can see a really terrific result, again all easily achieved using the volume fog tool and just combining it with a spotlight and some text. So far we've looked at volume fog created with the CG background and its associated well positioned pass. But how could you do the same thing with a live action plate that of course wouldn't have a well positioned pass? Well, you can manually create some layers yourself to simulate the depth of the shot. So here a polygon has been made of the foreground leading up to the edge of the road, another one covering the van, and a third one covering the clock tower. These give me some layers to effectively create the depth that I'm going to need. All of this is then merged into a 3D environment along with the 3D tracking data. And if we just look at what's going on here, we can see as I spin round the perspective view those particular elements in 3D space. There's the car, there's the clock tower, and there's the background which has been curved. From the side it looks a bit strange, but from the front, if we get the camera dead on, it looks perfectly normal. If we then add in our volume fog and go to the 3D merge connected to it, and move round it again, you can see quite clearly what's actually happening. There is the layered fog which will react accordingly depending on the space created by the various layers of the car and the clock tower etc. So even if you don't have a world position pass and you're using a live action plate you can still get a pretty good result with a bit of time and effort. Here is the final result with the car and fog layered in 3D space. If I do a side by side on this and have a look at the original on the left and the final on the right we can see quite an impressive effect all achieved from what was originally a flat 2D plate. In an earlier video we had a look at creating clouds by using bitmaps as particle streams. However this example here takes all that to a whole new level by also using the volume fog tool. First a background sky has been generated which is then fed into a 3D merge tool and if we look at the perspective view we see it transformed into a cyclorama. Moving round the view, this will provide us with our overall background in 3D space. That's followed by another background created with an animated polygon, which has then been combined with a particle emitter, and merged together to produce this. And then the whole thing uses a displacement map to create this effect. Along with a number of other elements, the result of all that has been fed into the volume fog tool and what you end up with, as I showed you right at the beginning, is this fantastic result of some really realistic clouds all nicely lit and glowing. Finally in this section I'm going to just touch on stereo and talk a little bit about Dimension. Dimension is a new technology that has been in development at ION for approximately two years, offering stereo production facilities the ability to achieve essential image estimation techniques quickly and cost effectively. So for ultimate control over stereo sequences, Dimension can precisely construct disparity mapping for accurate per pixel manipulation of the left and right eyes in true 3D space. To see more of this capability in action, I would point you to the excellent demonstration video by Jeff Krebs of ION, which can be found on the ION YouTube channel. Hopefully you'll agree that the 3D workflow inside Fusion is second to none. Just the position tools alone give you tremendous creative power and massive time-saving potential. And like most features, they can be combined with all the other great tools in Fusion to produce endless combinations. Most importantly, 3D data and control is embedded into a 2D environment, so you get 3D atmospheric effects at 2D performance. Rendering takes seconds per frame instead of minutes. Finally, there is a stereo workflow, fast, efficient, and with plenty of tools to get the job done. In the next video we'll be looking at particles. Meanwhile, don't forget to take a closer look at our website at www.ionline.com plus the ION YouTube channel where you can find a whole host of news, events and information that will show you why ION software is a world leader in compositing.